Hello to you and welcome to another little uh, behind the scenes exclusive. A uh, couple three things. First of all, the mail snail release was crazy. Um, we released 225 mail snails and uh, I think it was about three minutes. They had sold out, have not recovered from it, but we have mailed out all the mail snails. In fact, my wife and I had them ready to mail out uh, the very same night that uh, y'all ordered them. We just were so excited and I brought in all kinds of uh, goodies and things. Let's see. Not as much stuff left in my little goodie box as was there previously because I sent out the whole bunch of that stuff to y'all who I ordered the mail snail and might have sent some vintage figurines. Uh, I don't know. I sent somebody a cassette tape. I uh, hope that you can use that. And of course, everybody got on some little town of seasoning packets. Oh, speaking of Jerry Rig, what the? Look at the. That is incredible. That's my buddy Harold. And I asked his permission to share that that is Mr. Harold from the bunk. And that has become a real good friend of mine over these past couple of years. You know, some of y'all, uh, you know, I love all y'all and all y'all. I feel like y'all my friends. And I consider y'all my friends. And then some of y'all, it's just, you know, we, we talk on a daily basis and just keep up with everything, how the family's doing, that kind of a thing. Look at this, though. He took a primer spray can. Let me let me put the camera on a tripod so I can show y'all those. So like I was saying, my good buddy, Mr. Harold, sent me that right there. And this is just, let me zoom in on this thing. I want y'all to see the particulars of this right there. Get ready for this. Mr. Harrod, I want to say thank you for that. Oh, I got my thumb on his tongue right there. I want to say thank you for that right there. That's Jerry Reed. And I'm sure that he will be making some appearances in uh, future episodes. We got uh, some La Agua characters here. And what I'm doing is I am working on different types of uh, colors and things. Crap, man, did I miss the Agua release? You know, what's the story right about that? And I have never actually done an Agua release, okay? And so the reason being is two things. Uh, number one, uh, I have to pressure cast every single one of these. I never, though, the mainless reason is I never settled on a color particular. I know I wanted some kind of aqua, but I did not want it to just be some kind of little plain looking. So, I've been trying some things. Look at this. This got some things going on up inside of it. Uh, this is the one I did before that, though. But look, I really was going to make it to turn out to be blue, da ba dee da ba dee but it is not. Uh, it is just so dark. Look at that, how dark that is. Barely you can see. Do I have a flashlight? All right. So, and sorry to blind y'all with that light, but I wanted you to see that it actually is got some translucence to it. All right, so with some light on it, you can really see the blue color, but you take that light away and see that. So then I start to experiment with, you know, the more translucent looking colors like that. And so, like I'm saying, it's, it's time tedious to do these uh, aguas. You know, it was a riddle intended to be a uh, just a basic. And if I do a, uh, if I use 65D or smooth cast 320, some of them, I can do this without pressure casting because it's low viscosity. And we put it on that shaker table. And that's the same way that we made all the male snails. The male snail did not have to be pressure cast. But something about this, I wanted to have just... I don't want to do an opaque resin. I want it to be a translucent resin. So uh, I'm going to, uh, I got another resin coming in. I'm going to experiment with the problem with uh, Flexi 90. It ain't really a problem. It's just, you know, it cures really quick. This is probably my, fla my flavor. What did I say? My favorite flexible resin. Uh, but you got to be ready with it when you're ready to go with it. You got to go with it. And so see that right there, work time, three minutes. What that's called, they made a song about that. That's called uh, Under Pressure. 
because once it starts to get really uh, syrupy, it's harder for the pressure pot to get them bubbles out of it. But anyway, so two reasons. One, it's more difficult to make the, uh, excuse me, more time intensive. And two, I have not settled on the color. But guess what? In my pressure pot right now is, what y'all think? Two more of these that I'm fixing to try. I have not seen them. I did something different with them. And uh, y'all about to see. That. And I've already, you can see my table. You know, it is a workbench. And so you're supposed to get little things on it, whatever. But I don't want to get it looking like that right there. So I just put me a piece of plywood. See that? That plywood just kind of takes care of all the little excess. Oh, by the way, look at this. All right, some of y'all have asked me, Craft Man, did you forget all about the little toad character uh, right there? And the answer to that is I have not. I am planning to still doing a release of that character, but I will go ahead and say uh, it's going to be the most limited release that I ever have done. It's probably going to be 25 or something like that, maybe. Maybe that at the most, at the absolutely most, probably would be 50, but probably more like 15, 10, probably more like 25, maybe just five of them. I might just release two of them or one. I might just release three, maybe five of them. Maybe 10, 15, uh, 25, probably 20 of them. Let me go take these other things out the pressure pot real quick. Y'all can hear the, uh, the air pressure releasing. I would recommend that you do a couple of things. Uh, either you take your pressure pot outside before you let out the, uh, the air. Because what's happened is all that cured resin uh, gas, so to speak, is going to be released. Probably not the best thing to be breathing there, especially not on a daily basis. But, you know, I done had all my shots and things like that and had chicken pox one time when I was a little pie. So I'm not too worried, but it's really it's most safe to be sober and to just go ahead and to just, you know, take that outside on your parts and things. But what I'm going to do is run me a little hose from my uh, pressure chamber and just run it. Uh, out the window. All right. Now these molds, since this is the way I got it molded, is that I don't do half and half. I try to keep the seam going around that uh, edge like that right there. And you could clean off that flash easy. But uh, what I like to do, this mold is hard to, it is hard to remove things from this mold. You got to have you some, uh, oh, mercy. It wears out your little thumb. And so what I do is I pop and then pull down on it like this. And then come on up with it. Oh, come on now. Just because I'm doing a video, it's going to be difficult. That's pretty interesting. Let's see. It's got a little bit of a dimension to it, you know. It almost looks, if you're looking at that, it looks bumpy, but it's really not. See that? It's smooth. That's kind of neat. I don't know. So what do y'all think about that? And by the way, how did I accomplish this? Some alcohol ink right there with some mica powder. Let me know what y'all think. Should I just keep going that direction, you know, and make them all that way? I still want to do some unusual ones, you know, some real crazy. I want to do some that's got a, uh, so I want to do some clear ones out of epoxy and put things up inside of it, you know. I've seen that done before. I think that would be neat. And finally, I got some EcoFlex 30 on the way coming in. And I'm going to make some show enough squishy five versions of these. And, you know, probably not going to make too many, maybe about five, uh, five of them, three, probably about ten of them. 
might do about maybe five of them. I'm not sure, but but that's the squishy version I'm talking about. But this right though, what do y'all think? Should I go with it? Should I keep working on it? All right, so, you know, got some little thing cooking, got some thing working on the uh, computer that I ain't really said a whole lot about. Uh, let me see what else. I know I forget. I know I'm always forgetting something. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, Elegoo and they'll send me a Mars Pro 3D printer. And that's a long star. It's not really a long star. Basically, they emailed me and said, hey, uh, we sending you a printer. I said, y'all, I already sent my printer. I remember that one I did the video and compared it to the uh, inner cubic. Elegoo Mars is uh, sitting over there by Castle Grayskull. And y'all don't need to send me anything. And it works great. I like y'all Elegoo Mars. Thank you for that. No need to send a printer. And they emailed back and said, no, no, it's already. Uh, I say email. This actually was on Facebook Messengers. And so I have a tendency to uh, neglect my messages and stuff like that on social media. I apologize for that. I just forget all about it and assist her for about three days. Anyway, Ella Google now said, well, uh, it's on its way. I said, well, let me know. I need to probably send that back to y'all, you know, because I cannot guarantee that I'll be able to do a video on it. And because the video that I did originally uh, about just the Ella Google Mars minus the Pro, it's just, let me block that out. The original with the Ella Google Mars 3D printer. Because of that video, they sold them about 30 of them units. And so I said, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. I actually believe in the product. And I only tell you about things that I really believe in. And so long story long, they end up just saying, well, you could just have it. And as a gift to you, uh, because they didn't pay me nothing or do nothing like that, they just gave me the Elegoo Mars. You know, I didn't ask for no money. And come to find out for y'all that's interest, the way these YouTube videos usually work, is you get free product and people pay you to talk about it. And I don't, you know, for me, it's just enough to have a free product. You know, that's that's a big deal to me. And so there it is. I got me a Mars Pro. Probably what I'm going to wind up doing, I feel obligated to, you know, compare to at least side by side test them, see what's the differences. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. I just don't always want to be putting out videos about here's a new thing, look at this new thing, look at that, you need to go buy that out, yada yada, etc. I'd rather would just make toys and things. Let me know what y'all think about that color. And so out here with the help of a uh, Jerry Rig, hello, me and Jerry are gonna be out here trying to make a couple three more of these before uh, it gets too dark. So I ain't got to walk home through the woods in the dark, you know. This your friend the crass man saying that I hope y'all having a good week so far. I love y'all. Keep steady crafting.